Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Heck in the 15-minute pool on ICC. Um, Heck is a little, well, quite a bit lower rated than me at the moment, 1633. Uh, I'm going to play, you know, I'm going to play Bishop C4, actually. I'm not going to go into the Royal Lopez. I'm going to play this a little more uh, flexibly, let's say. So, I had to wait a while to get this game, and I know I've been playing with some pretty big rating mismatches lately. So, hopefully we have an interesting game, however. I've been lucky recently because my 15-minute content, I think, has been pretty interesting. Lots of good battles. Um, I would expect him to play d6 here. Either d6 or a6 is pretty common. Now, because he's played d6, net a5 might be on the agenda. So, I will take this opportunity to just play a prophylactic move. I'll play bishop b3. So that if he goes net a5, I can drop my bishop back to c2 pretty seamlessly. Uh, bishop g4, usually they won't do this, uh, just because after I play knight bd2 with the plan of going rook e1 and knight f1 and then knight to g3, I can then play h3, and his bishop won't have a lot of good squares to go to. So that's the plan for now. Very basic plan, but it should be something he'll have to think about soon. Um... Yeah, a6, I'll just go knight f1. This is a really standard knight maneuver in this line. So knight bd2 to f1, and usually heading into g3, sometimes e3. Because this queen is already on d7, I'm actually kind of thinking about bishop g5. I wonder if that's a possibility. He just took that away by playing h6. Yeah, so here, knight g3, or maybe knight e3 come to mind. Knight e3 would be really interesting, actually. I wonder if knight e3 is better in this case, because uh, knight g3, I'm not threatening his bishop. I could play h3, but with my knight on g3, if I'm pushing pawn h3, I'm a little bit concerned he might play bishop takes h3 and sacrifice his bishop for two pawns plus an attack. So I'm kind of leaning towards playing knight e3. I think I'm going to do it. Yeah, and I hope to win one of his bishops, either with him playing bishop takes f3 or him playing bishop takes e3. And in either case, I think I'm going to be satisfied with the result of the opening. I think I played this guy before, heck, so I'm just going to check his stats again. Pretty good 5-minute player. He's about 20.56 in 5-minute. So it looks like a decent opponent. Uh, he just drops his bishop back. So I could play knight f5 now and then try to utilize that knight being on a good square. Um, to threaten stuff against his king. I think I will do that. Just trying to see if there's anything else. Uh, I don't think so. I'll just go knight f5. If he goes knight g4, I can play rook e2. So that's all right. Plays knight e7, trying to exchange knights. Um, knight g3 would be very normal. So via a roundabout way, my knight has made it to g3. <laughs> seems weird that I went knight f1 to e3 and then to f5 and then to g3 but it did get him to move his bishop back to g6 so that's nice so here I'm thinking either d4 or knight h4 which move is more promising d4 or knight h4 knight h4 he'll just play bishop h7 more than likely d4 <clears throat> d4 is a little more combative I think I like d4 a bit more, so I'll go for that. And I'll pre-move this capture. Yeah, I'm just not completely satisfied with knight h4, bishop h7. I don't know that I'm getting much there. I could still play knight h4 in this position. I could also play e5. e5 would be interesting. Because if e5 and then d takes e5, I have knight takes e5. Uh, ooh, or maybe I don't. I was thinking knight takes g6 might be possible, but his knight is protecting that. His f-pawn is pinned, so that doesn't help him. Um, hmm. I wonder if I should just play a move like h3. h3 seems pretty useful, so I'll do it. Just keeps his queen or knight out of g4. I kind of want to put my bishop on f4 next, but I didn't want to have to reckon with queen to g4, so... That's why I'm doing this. He's playing very fast still. 
So if bishop f4, he might move his knight is the thing to try to attack the e-pawn. I think that's his plan. I'm going back to the e5 move. So if e5 and then d takes e5, knight takes e5, queen takes d4. Do I have anything there? It doesn't look like it. Nothing that I see at least. Hmm. What about knight h4, bishop g6, queen f3? That's another way to play this position. Ah, that drops the d-pawn. Can't do that. That's too bad. Hmm. Bishop f4. I might have to drop my bishop back to c2 soon in order to defend the center. Might be a necessity. So I'm kind of thinking like uh, bishop f4, knight c6, bishop c2 to defend e4. He does have knight b4, however. Maybe I should go bishop a4 in this position to provoke him into playing like c6 or b5. Seems kind of extravagant though to do that. Huh. It's a surprisingly tricky position. I'm going to play a3. Weird move, but... This is so that if he plays knight c6, I could play bishop c2. Wow, he plays king h8. What is the purpose of that? I wonder if he's going to put his knight on g8. Or if he just felt uncomfortable with the pin on the f-pawn. It's probably more likely. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll continue with my plan, bishop f4. Plays knight h5, okay. Yeah, I was wondering if that move was okay for him. Okay, let's take it. And when he takes back, I might play g4. I'm thinking about it. G4, and I don't think the sacrifice is any good for him because I take and then play bishop g3. That's probably all right for me, isn't it? I hope. Otherwise, he is threatening to take on f3, and my d-pawn is lacking some coverage. Let's go g4 and see how he plays it. I'm trying to get him to slow down a little bit. Well, it's okay if he keeps playing fast, but <laughs> it'd be nice to make him think a little bit. Um, queen d2, is that a good move here? What about h5? Is h5 unpleasant? Might be. Maybe I should go king g2. Let's go king g2 before anything else. That way, if h5, I do have knight h4. So... We'll see how he breaks out of this. He is just playing so fast. Okay, knight c6. So I'm going to play bishop c2 probably. Yeah. Bishop c2. Just defend the e4 pawn. He can go knight, uh, pawn h5 now. Because if knight h4, he might be able to take on d4. So if h5, I wonder if I can just play king g3. Boldly stride out with my king to the third rank <laughs> to defend the g-pawn. It's possible. For the moment, I have everything defended. So e4 is defended, d4 is defended. It's looking okay. He might try to double up his rooks on the e-file. That would be a logical plan to try to attack e4 better. What else could he do? Yeah, it's either that or h5. Uh, maybe he'll play d5. d5 is actually probably a pretty good move. 
What do I do against d5? Because if d5, I'm noticing that um, on e5, he would have bishop take c2. And then queen takes c2 and my d-pawn would have been a problem. Fortunately for me, he didn't see it or he didn't consider it. Because now I, I kind of want to play d5 myself just to keep his knight out of the game. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. I like how this keeps his knight completely restricted. He can't go to, to e6 or c6 anymore. So he's very, very restricted. He can play f6 and try to get the knight back into play via f7. But that leaves a hole on e6. And I don't think it's something he wants necessarily. Yeah, if f6, maybe I'll play bishop e3. Trade the bishops and then try to get my knight to d4. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So he's considering his options again. Queen b5, okay. So hitting the pawn on b2. Any other purpose to that move other than to attack the pawn? I don't see it. I actually can play bishop a4 if I want. Bishop a4, queen takes b2, bishop takes e8, so I win the exchange. How good is that in this position? I don't know. He has pressure on e4. That makes me slightly uncomfortable. I don't know if I want to give up the uh, light square bishop so easily in that case. Uh, just judgment call. If I had longer to think about this, I would definitely think about bishop a4, but just judgment call. I don't want him doing that, winning the b2 pawn. and I wouldn't be up that much material, but I'd have to give up my light square bishop, and I feel this light square bishop is uh, worth preserving for a while at least. I don't want to sell out so cheaply for it. Okay, he's oblivious to bishop a4. So um, that's, that's nice. <laughs> um, so if bishop a4, queen here... Rook c1, maybe? I can almost trap his queen. There's some serious queen trap threats coming along. Uh, pff, I, I just have to play this move on principle, basically. Yeah, let's do it. It would be surprising to me if this wasn't a good idea. So, um, if queen b6, I see I can play bishop e3. And he won't be able to take on f2 with check yet. So that's nice. So I think he has to play queen c4 now. Yeah. Plays queen c4. I could also play bishop b3. Just go back in this case. Let's just think for a second about what's the best way to exploit his position here. Um, if rook c1, queen a2. Do, can I trap his queen? Doesn't look like it. What about knight d2 to begin with? Knight d2, queen c3, rook e3. Nope, his bishop's there guarding that. Okay. Hmm. This is a position where I don't want to flag just because I'm looking for the best possible win. <laughs> that would be very bad. I mean, knight d2 looks pretty good. Uh, I don't know, though. Crossroads. I'm at a crossroads. Um... Just very uncertain. Part of me just wants to bag the exchange right away and say, you know what? You're good. The other part of me wants to play rook c1 and wait for a moment. Man, oh man.
All right, I can't think about this anymore, so let's just take, and he takes, and now uh, knight d2 is what I'm thinking. I like the look of knight d2. It defends everything. So that's nice. Yeah, let's go knight d2. And if bishop takes e4, I have rook takes e4, and his queen will be hanging still. So that's what I like about that move. Queen d4. Yeah, I was thinking I can play queen f3 against that move, which remains defending e4, also defends f2, and now bishop e3 is an idea. Yeah. My rook on a1 is um, lacking one defender now because the queen was forced here. But other than that, looks pretty good. Is there any way he can cause me trouble here? His knight is still restricted, so this is convenient for me. That his knight is still out of the game. Bishop b6. Okay, I think he saw that bishop e3 is what I was intending. So he takes a measure against that. Um, let's go here anyways. I don't think my bishop's doing anything on f4 necessarily, so... Uh, okay, so I can take here now. Right? Yeah, let's take here. And let's play knight c4. Attacking b6 and d6. He can play queen e7. However, if queen e7, I'm thinking I'll go queen f4. And then if he takes on e4 with check, I have f3. Which defeats a lot of his threats. So that's cool. If anything other than queen e7, I can take on d6 next move. Which will attack his rook and also defend e4. So now queen f4 is what I'm thinking. He does have knight f7, however. But that's a small price to pay. So we'll just do it. Yeah, knight f7, and I think I can take on b6, right? Yeah. Unless queen c7 is a problem. Well, let's just play f3. Do I want to play f3? I don't know. <laughs> if f3, he's going to play b5. Hmm. Uh, slightly annoying. Okay, I'm just going to play f3. He'll play b5, but what are you going to do? <laughs> I have three minutes left, so I got I to gotta pick up the pace. b5, I'll play knight e3. I expect him to jump his knight in. So knight e5. Uh, rook ed1 would be indicated. Okay, let's do that. My rook doesn't have much to do on the e-file anymore. Um, he can play rook c8. This is true. But if rook c8, I wonder if I can just play rook c1. Because if he trades and then goes knight d3, I do have rook c8 check at that point. And I think I'm making it out with a good position. So I think now it's going to boil down to whether I can convert this position in time. Not time pressure, but under time duress. So he has knight d3, but I have rook c8 check. So um, yeah, he does that. This looks pretty good, though. And if queen d7, I'll play rook c3, I think. I like that move. It guards d3, also reinforces f3. He can play knight c4. Um, against knight c4, I'll probably... Mm, I don't know. Maybe h4? Maybe a4? Maybe knight e3? Yeah, how about knight e3? Under minus knight. 
And now if knight back to e5, I think I'll play h4. And try to go h5. So that as bishop moves, I can play queen f5. If h5 himself, I can take. He takes with his bishop. Queen f5 check. I force the queens off. That's winning for me. Okay. So here he allows the check. queen exchange. This must be close to winning, if not winning, for me. Knight c4 practically is the only move, I think, here. Uh, h5. Do we want to play it? Yeah, let's play it. Just to solidify my knight here so he can't go g6, uh, even though he just Check. played that move. <laughs> um, let's go knight back here again. If he plays knight e5, my rook breaks into c7. That's over. So I'm expecting him to trade. Check. Yeah, this is, this is over. Provided I beat the clock. No reason not to take, so I'll do it. Helps that his light square bishop is very poor here, too. It doesn't have scope. If he takes, I'll take with the knight. Um, if he moves his knight, I have knight takes f6 check. Which is fantastic for me. Yep, he takes. Okay, I'll take... Not much left to be said about this position, so he resigned. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at this one. So we have a uh, Joko Pianismo variation that came about via a two knights uh, move order. And a lot of times in this line, black uh, plays a6 and then drops the bishop back to a7. And that's actually why I was encouraged to play d4, the fact that he left the bishop on c5. Um, kind of encouraged me to advance this pawn and attack his bishop with tempo. Not a huge fan of bishop g4. I don't think that's the proper place for his bishop in this line. When I played this line for black, I've usually ended up putting the bishop on e6, is what I've done. So, I'm not sure about bishop g4, because it just seems like it's a target for my knights uh, once I start maneuvering. And as I mentioned, this knight bd2 to f1 maneuver, very common in this line. Extremely common. So it resembles a Roy Lopez, where this maneuver is also featured. So, yeah, so if I play knight g3, I mean, normally I'd say against a bishop on g4 in this structure, you'd want to play knight g3 and then pawn h3. But with this queen on d7, I'm a little leery of that, because I'm afraid he can play bishop takes h3, like sack and try to break through, basically. Um, let's just say hypothetically, like, I don't know, rook 8 e8, h3, bishop takes h3, g takes h3, queen takes h3. He is threatening that. So that gives me pause. Um, also, knight g4 could be coming. So I bet I'm okay if I play something like d4 and just block off his bishop. But uh, eh, I didn't. I wasn't quite certain about that during the game. So I thought, you know what, knight e3 is a good compromise. So let's go there. He played bishop h5, and I jumped the knight into f5. And then I don't want to trade knights with him. That would be kind of lame. So just drop the knight back here. And it would have been interesting if he had played bishop g4 right back to this square to try to, like, encourage me to play h3. But um, he just did bishop g6 instead, after which I played d4. I wonder if the computer likes this move, d4. I thought about knight h4 as well, but somehow d4 seemed more to the point. Yeah, the computer approves of this. Now h3, so here I play some improving moves. I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to utilize my uh, center, so I figured, uh, let's just make a couple useful moves, like h3, roll out something coming to g4, a3, roll out knight c6 to b4, and hopefully those moves pay dividends in the future. And they kind of did, they were useful. King h8, I think he could have uh, benefited from slowing down a little bit here. I mean, king h8, he's playing some really... Rapid fire moves, like two seconds on that move. Bishop f4, and then real quick, knight h5. Um, I took, and then played g4. I don't think bishop takes g4 is sound. Uh, let's just check. But I think if this were to happen, check. You know, I'd be fine playing bishop g3. I was slightly worried, like, maybe f5 was a good move. 
trying to just swamp me on the king side, but I see the engine doesn't put much stock in it, so I could probably even play something like bishop e6 if I needed to in this position. Just pin his f-pawn to his queen. So that's fine. Um, so g4, he just dropped back to g6, and then I played king g2, knight c6, bishop c2. Yeah, so here I left the engine on, but it said the move that um, I alluded to right before he played the move in the game, which was knight d8, but d5 would have been a good move for him. Yeah, I was scared of that because the problem with d5 for me is that if I play e5, he can take on c2 and then capture on d4, just winning a pawn straight up. And I take, he takes. I have nothing to show for my pawn deficit here. So, yeah, d5 would have been a nice way to undermine this e4 pawn. Because my center looks strong, but it's actually, like, kind of fragile if he attacks it in the right way. He's already got three minor pieces, oops, three minor pieces trained on it. And if he adds the d-pawn as well, yeah, I could easily see things going poorly for me at this point. Instead, you did that, and then I was able to play d5 and really cut his knight out of the game. This was a turning point. Yeah, and here, I was wondering about bishop a4. Uh, looks like a good idea that I refrained from doing that. One thing I think I uh, sort of failed to recognize was that if this were to happen, queen takes b2, then that pawn on f2 is under attack with check. So I have to be wary of that. Interesting. So my b4 move was justified. And I think he completely blanked on bishop a4. I don't think he saw that move at all. Because he just continued, like, normally, f6, trying to get his knight into play. And then I got this in. I took... I did spend a little time here, didn't I? Down to 4 minutes and 37 seconds. So I spent about 2 minutes trying to decide what to do. Um, I was just debating between, like, good options. Like, rook c1 and knight d2... Maybe I could have trimmed a little bit of time off of this. I'm not sure I had to spend that much time in order to play. Bishop takes e8. Knight d2. And I'm just going to check. Oh, yes. Yeah, so the tactics work in my favor. Like, if he tries to win my e-pawn right now, that just backfires because if rook takes e4. And his queen will be hanging. Next move, if he recaptures with his rook. So he did this. I played queen f3. Okay, bishop e3 was also good. I guess I didn't consider that seriously because of this, but that's kind of ridiculous because, yeah, I can just block the check and he's still in this pin on his, or in the skewer of his bishop on a7. Okay, so that was more easily winning. Queen f3 was also okay. I'm still like plus three, four ish. Oh, queen takes a1. Aha, uh -huh. did I blunder that? <laughs> yeah, I blundered that move. Queen takes a1, that's a cool idea. And then if rook takes a1, he has bishop takes e4. Uh, fortunately for me, it looks like I'm still a lot better. The engine gives queen takes e4, rook takes e4, knight takes d6. And I maintain an advantage here. What happens if rook d4? Just rook e1. Okay, so trying to come down here after the knight. Yeah, I completely didn't see queen takes a1, so... Um, that would have caught me completely by surprise if he had played that. Trying to deflect my rook from guarding e4. So, queen e7, I went queen f4 attacking his pawn. He played knight f7. Yeah, and I solidified. I'm fairly happy with the rest of this. I think this went okay. And he traded. And as I said, knight d3 is harmless here because I can get a check on c8. And then move my queen, like queen g3. And white should just be winning. Yeah, this is just... As long as I don't allow him to, like, coordinate his queen and his knight, then I'm winning. But those are the only pieces that can do me damage. His light square bishop is completely out of the game because of my, my pawn structure. So, so long as I don't allow that, I'm good. So knight f5, hitting his queen. Rook c3, I'm very satisfied with that move. Yeah, and just kind of pestered him with the exchanges, started Check. making progress, and just traded the queens at the right moment. Yeah, Check. and this is, this is over. After knight e3, it's definitely over. He either has to trade, and it's hopeless. My rook will Check. get back to the c-file very soon, lay waste to his queenside pawns, or do what he did in the game, like avoid the trade, Check. but still allow the rook to come into c7 with decisive effect. So another game where I think black could have benefited from uh, slowing down in the opening. 
it's just it's strange. Like a lot of my opponents are playing very quickly in the opening in these standard games, and I think it's it's hurting them because um, you know as you can see, he was just blitzing right through the opening into the early middle game where some critical decisions had to be made. Like already right around oh I'd say here ish. After I had played d4, I'm starting to use some time and try to figure things out. And he's just, you know, cruising, basically. That move, five seconds. King h8, two seconds. Knight h5, what was that? Five seconds. Yeah, just real quick decisions that had a lasting impact. So, all right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this standard game. And I'll be back tomorrow with another one. Please leave me any feedback in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.